So I would isolate myself. I would read alone on a bench. Maybe I would have one friend here and there, but I would stay home and play with dolls or go on the internet. And that's where I found friends on the internet. And that's where I discovered transitioning. At, at were you nine still or 10, like that age or a little older? Uh, when I discovered the gender stuff, I was around 11 to 12. God, that's crazy. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is. Hey, everybody. I caught myself another one. And this is going to be an excellent one. But I've been trying to get her on for a while, but it's been, you know, scheduling and all of that kind of stuff. But that being said, before we move forward, thanks again for watching. My channel's growing crazy. You're all helping so much get these amazing guests on and really saying what needs to be said out there. And it, it helps by having people watch this and push it and get it to people who need to see it. So with that, thanks for liking, subscribing, ringing the little bell thing and all of that kind of stuff. And I I just want to get forward and move into this interview <laughs> because I'm so excited to talk to you today. So I have Jade today and um, Jade will introduce herself and then we can move forward with the interview. Hi, Jade. <laughs> Hi, I, my name is Jade Martin and I'm a detransitioner. You might have seen my tweets on X. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <I> <laughs> possibly. <laughs> I go by Jade Rants on X. Okay, great. How old are you? I am 23. I'm turning 24 this April. Oh my God, you're a baby. And it's how, how long? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I remember how old I am. So I, I want to know, let, let's talk a little bit about, so so how long ago did you detransition? I detransitioned when I was 20. So that was around uh, January, February of 2021. Oh, okay. 2021. So it's been three about three years now that you... Yeah. And so I started... I started testosterone the week of my 18th birthday around that time. Okay. 18, you started T. Let's talk a little bit about before the transition. Where, where Do you mind me asking where you're from? No, I don't mind. Okay, great. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> I have lived in California my entire life. I was born okay. here. Okay. Um, but I did move six hours away from my hometown. During when you started to transition, you moved? You were in a different place? Uh, yeah, I was in a different place. Okay. So, so where I grew up. Okay, so where you grew up. So so, so when you're, let's talk a little bit about when you're growing up. How, how was that? Were you just a, a kid or were you a tomboy or were you, did you show masculinity um, or any of that? I was the girliest girl you can imagine. And it wasn't forced on me. Mm -hmm. It was just who I was. I mm -hmm. thought I was a princess. I loved dolls, dresses. Mm -hmm. I believed in fairy tales, like princes and that type of stuff. That was just my personality. That was not forced on me. Great. Um, like my sister, she, I was, she wasn't as nearly as girly as I was growing up. Mm -hmm. There was no signs of me being trans mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> I'm not shocked. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, what does that even mean, right? We've been so brainwashed yeah. to this idea of what trans is, right? What, what trans, and I'm yeah. going to say from my perspective as an old, <laughs> an old person and well, as somebody who transitioned a long ass time ago, we never called it that right we never said i feel trans or that's mm -hmm. a trans kid or trans no one identified as trans we identified as men and women because that's the yeah. crux of what a trans person is it's having yeah. you know this disconnect between your biology and how you present mm -hmm. the world it's real simple they're making it so complicated <laughs> So you didn't have any of that you were super feminine growing up good you had a good child do you have a good childhood um I had a good childhood within my home. Okay. I grew up with good parents. Great. Siblings, family. I'm very family oriented. That was not a problem. The issue came mm -hmm. when I left the home. Uh, uh, when I entered kindergarten and started school, that's when I experienced many things like bullying and... 
Oh no. I also struggled with OCD. Okay. And that took a toll on me growing up. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't easy because people didn't really understand. Did people understand what was going on with you? Like the OCD? Um, no, I didn't even fully understand it. I just remember I have this very specific memory of being in the garage with my dad and he was building me a dollhouse. <laughs> cool. And I remember thinking, I don't think the way that everybody else thinks, meaning my OCD, like there's something yeah. wrong with my brain and I didn't understand it, but I just knew it was different. You know, other people don't have to touch things five times in order to get rid of a thought, that type of thing. Um, so I have a good family. Mm -hmm. I was not raised incorrectly. It was just circumstances like OCD and then going into school and being heavily bullied and criticized for any little thing about me. Wow. So do you, so you were, so you stood away because you're getting bullied for a reason. Is it because you were mm -hmm. acting different? Um, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I was shy. I mm -hmm. also had social anxiety mm -hmm. and maybe kids got put off by that, but Ultimately, I was picked on for how I looked. Okay. I was called bug eyes and made fun of. <laughs> yeah. What? And You're so pretty. I, I don't even <laughs> understand. Thank what? You. That's weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was... Kids are mean. Kids are mean. <laughs> Let's just get that out. Kids are mean. I mean, I, I don't even know. Like, it's just, they I are. think they are. They're just mean. And bully behavior is a part of childhood. I'm not saying it's okay because I got bullied too. It's not okay. But I think that we do know now that it just tends to be part of chi what children do on some level, right? Yeah. To s some kids, yeah. Uh, obviously, I wasn't the only one being bullied, but. No, but there's always the one or two or three kids that got bullied, yeah. and the other kids are the bully people. So it's always yeah. the one. Or, I was also I also got bullied as a as a kid because I was so because I more than the others I was very masculine, right? And I wanted to be a mm. boy, and they would tease me all the time that I wanted to be a boy, right? Or fighting or doing boy things. So mm -hmm. I get it. And was your OCD at that time as well? Were you getting bullied for that kind of stuff? Um. For my OCD, I was being bullied, but more so by the teachers. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird, wow. but even the teachers were sort of in on picking on me. Maybe not directly, but sometimes it was directly. Like I, one time I nearly got a teacher fired and they kind of guilt tripped me into just apologizing so that she wouldn't be fired because I was a kid. But for the OCD... Uh, there was a teacher that would get very, very angry whenever I would perform a ritual. So oh. it was like I was sitting at my desk and I wouldn't stop doing a specific action. I think it was me touching my pencil and putting it down repeatedly over and over again, mm -hmm. something like that. And she would pick out my action in front of the whole class and just wow. pick on me, tell me, telling me to stop acting like I was the most horrible kid doing the worst behavior. It was humiliating. Oh, and sure. there was also another time where I had to use the bathroom repeatedly because of my OCD. Yeah. And she just sent me home. I was not a nuisance to any other kid. I, it's not like I was screaming my head off. I wasn't bothering anybody. Yeah. But there were things like that that teachers would do, all, along with kids also bullying me, which was weird. I don't know if it's because they favored the kids that were the bullies or something. Who knows? I mean, I mean, literally, I got bullied, and I'm like double your age. So. You know what I mean? And I, I, I can I can I can say that I think it's just been around since kids have yeah. been going to school because kids can be little jerks. They really can. Yeah. And um 
teachers doing that though is completely insane and that it was really strange that is so inappropriate because it was bothering the teacher your ocd was bothering the teacher and i think Mm. that teacher felt like they didn't have control over you as a student maybe or something to that effect that they i mean that's just a shame that 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 happened so now you're growing up in this kind of childhood space where you're being bullied and you're dealing with your OCD and now you get into, let's say high school, right? So now you're in high school is what's happening in high school. Um, like, are you feeling okay? Are you just a normal girl in high school? Are you (laughs) feeling isolated? No, not really. So I think the issues with, the gender stuff happened before that. Okay, that's what I want to get to. When did that start? Yeah. So I had hit puberty very early, and okay. Okay. that also caused more bullying because my body was changing and I was becoming taller than the other kids. Wow. Curvier, I had to start wearing bras. That was what the age? Thing. What age was that? At nine. <gasps> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Oh my God. Totally. It was very early. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and because I had been bullied, I isolated myself. I didn't feel comfortable around other kids. Not only did they not like me and they were put off by me, but they were ironically growing faster than I was. Mm-hmm. Despite me hitting puberty way before anybody, mm-hmm. I felt scared about how everybody was growing up they were growing up and getting boyfriends and doing sexual things Mm -hmm. and i still wanted to play with dolls and i had still believed in this fantasy that i had learned from disney channel you know i was a princess and princes existed and guys acted more like my dad and my brothers that were respectful and less like these boys that were sexualizing me yeah so i would isolate myself i would read alone on a bench maybe i would have one friend here and there but i would stay home and play with dolls or go on the internet and that's where I found friends on the internet and that's where I discovered transitioning. Wow. At at were you nine still or ten, like that age or a little older? Uh when I discovered the gender stuff, I was around eleven to twelve. God, that's crazy. I mean, it's you know, I have eleven year old and I can't even imagine him discovering that stuff. And yeah. so so yeah, it actually shocks me because I'm very around that age group of young boys right now with my son and you know his friends and and I just they seem so innocent if if that makes sense right because yeah. you're you're innocent. eleven is little <laughs> yeah it's little and you're innocent and you're just starting to learn things right so here you are at eleven or twelve you get on the internet and oh my so how many years ago was that you're twenty out twenty. Three, so God, it's like 10 or so more years ago. What what platform? Was it like Tumblr or something like that? Or It started on YouTube and then it YouTube. sort of went to Tumblr and then okay. Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you find this sort of space and then how did that make you feel? Um, I thought because I had been uncomfortable with myself i had a distorted view of myself which now i believe is dysmorphia i did not see myself like other people did right. some days i would look in the mirror and i would look completely different than i thought i did look so i knew something was wrong and i thought feeling different had something to do with what these other people were saying was dysphoria Mm -hmm. and I can't say exactly one reason why, because it was multiple things. Sure. Sure. But it, 
I mean, I didn't have any friends. I didn't right. feel special or yeah. And, and here I was online and these girls were saying, this is going to fix your problems. This is going to make you feel confident. Are they so, 12 year olds as well? Are they ba basically the same age group or, as you? Are they a little older or? Um, I would talk to people my age, but also uh, just straight up adults around that time. Uh, uh, yeah. That's so gross. <laughs> I mean, not for you, but what? I already know this yeah. is going on. There's no way this isn't going on still. That's how young people are. So It's easy. probably worse now, but. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. So here, mm -hmm. you, oh my God, my friend. Uh, I can, I mean, I can just watch it i'm watching it happen uh, in my in my brain i'm just watching you get on the internet you're lonely you're isolated which i was yeah. the same way as a young person and mm -hmm. and then you but i didn't have the internet right so i see it i can just see how it you can easily get put into this place cuz the internet also has a distance right so you're not really with people yeah but you are with people Especially for people, because I was very shy as a child as well. So especially for shy people or people who are bullied or people mm. who are not necessarily very um, socially active, right? It's uh, easier to talk to people online. A hundred percent. So now they're telling you, are they telling you you're trans or you might be trans or something to that effect? Uh, yeah, they're saying this is exactly how it feels to be trans. That's that's what it is. Uh, what is it? <laughs> I'd like to know what were the what were you saying that made them say like was there certain things you were saying about yourself that, or that you're like Gosh, I don't I don't okay. remember exactly, but sure. I just remember describing not liking myself something to that extent. Okay, your body probably yeah, like yeah. you don't really cuz you you went through puberty also early, so yeah. that's hard to do especially i think for a it girl. was oh i didn't know what a period was at that age because i was so young my yeah i mean you don't expect to tell your eight or nine year old what a period is it just no. wasn't the right time and i got it so quickly wow wow mm. it's just you know it's so distressing for young people to get that you know i got it <laughs> i got on my period <laughs> and i got boobs and oh my yeah. god it threw me for a loop and, but you know mm -hmm. for i think it does that for all girls on some level yeah I, that's yeah, yeah i think that's the case with everybody it I is uncomfortable you. you can yeah you can want you can <laughs> sorry i'm not saying this correctly all right you can accept that you're female and embrace that you're a woman but having your period especially when you get it for the first time is difficult and scary scary not liking that part of your life doesn't make you trans no <laughs> literally no <laughs> i don't think anybody likes puberty <laughs> and nobody likes having their period like it's not no. something you like look forward to and you're like even when you get to be old enough to like more understand no. it you're not like yeah. yay i got my unless you get unless you don't want to get pregnant but other than that that's probably the only time you ever say yay for your period is because you, yeah. you're not pregnant but I, come on I, yeah i definitely right? celebrated getting it back after stopping testosterone but and then there's that you're right <laughs> <laughs> and, then there's, and yeah. then there's that wow so i mean i can just look jade i can just see it all i can see it all i can see it all so you're so vulnerable you're so vulnerable at that age first of all secondly yeah. you're dealing with so much other stuff happening with you and then these kids are telling you oh, oh that sounds like you're trans right so i mean i hear this so many from so many of you almost the exact same thing that are like come mm -hmm. this you know <laughs> you're definitely like us it just creeps me out it yuck it feels so creepy yeah. you know it's... okay great so now you're online dealing with people calling you trans so you decided to take that into consideration i guess right 
Yeah, there were many reasons why. Uh, I, like I said, all I wanted when I was little was to find my prince and get married and have children. And these kids had made me feel like I was the ugliest woman ever and that I would never have that. And when I went online, there were girls and older women writing stories about boys being together, <laughs> like fan fictions, wow. male on male stuff, pretty much. Mm. And I kind of saw that as my way out. Like, oh, I can have love and romance without feeling inferior to these women, you know, without feeling, oh, I'm not as pretty as her. I'm not as lovable as her. I can just turn into a trans boy and then just be loved by a guy Wow! without having to worry about yeah my body about being pretty yeah about being yeah. pretty or the standards of being a woman i, I think mm -hmm. a lot of that is going on with these young people today and i think they're yeah. having the same things that you you were saying and then did you talk to your parents at all about this happening during this time? uh no i was a good kid so they just trusted me to be online growing up i would just play computer games or uh Barbie dress up game. So they just trusted me on the internet. Okay. They weren't concerned because I was a good kid. Mm -hmm. Uh that didn't come until later, them knowing. Well, yeah. So so now you're sort as far as I'm concerned, you're being indoctrinated into this thought process that this is going to alleviate all your problems. And so what part so so here you are, this is happening. What was when did it start to become an actual like realization or that did uh, uh, I think you said you did take testosterone, right? Yeah, yeah. So, mm. so what are the next steps now? Here you are being indoctrinated online, and little by little, you're starting to think this way, right? So, take mm. me now to, through that situation. So, I had pretty much only been introducing myself as the male name that I had chosen and the male pronouns in online spaces, but I had started presenting more masculine. So I would, at 12, I bandaged my chest and bought a binder. And wow. when I got... How did you buy the binder? <laughs> so every week... My parents would give me an allowance, and sometimes they would let me get stuff online okay. every weekend. Okay. And I would say, oh, I'm buying this from the internet, but really it was a binder. Wow. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got a binder, you were binding, you, were cha you changed your name to the boy name, to the pronouns. All in secret, though. Your parents don't really know this is happening? Um... Not fully. I think they did. But I don't they weren't really. Maybe they eventually were, they did. Yeah. But. Right. But maybe they just thought you were, you know, your kid. You're doing stuff. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just thought maybe it was, you know, whatever. Kids do stuff like that. You know, put on different kinds of clothes or baseball cap or whatever. <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe they just thought you were just being a tomboy or something. Yeah. So then when did so, they, Yeah. Then it went to high school. I don't remember middle school. That's just a complete wow. link to me. But yeah. in high school, of course. Um, I didn't think that I, I wanted to take testosterone, but I didn't think it was realistic for me in high school. I thought I was going to get older and move out, and then that's when I would take testosterone. Okay. But when I got into high school, I... It didn't bother me that nobody was calling me the male name mm -hmm. or male pronouns until I was asked by a teacher and students if I use different pronouns and a different name. And then that's when I started publicly um, being socially transitioned wow. outside of the internet. 
Wow. Um, so yeah. the teacher and the kids, because that's what they put in the schools now, right? Where they literally yeah. ask you your pronouns and how do you identify? Like what? You're asking high school kids this? Yeah. Yeah. So that just is, again, another level of indoctrination to me because clearly you're a girl. So clearly you're a she. Why are they asking you that crap? It's so mm. gross. So yeah. So they're gay. Okay, that, there's your opening. There's your opening to become trans in the public right exactly that's yeah. right that's right okay so now you're whoever you are your name and your pronouns are being done at school right so they're calling you he at school yeah <laughs> wow it just blows my mind it totally does it blows my mind <laughs> and the so where what's happening with your parents do they even know this is happening um my mom did. I don't, okay. I'm not sure what my dad was thinking throughout the whole thing. I still haven't even asked him, but my mom did know. Oh, she did. Okay. Cause you know, some of the parents aren't even aware that this is happening with their children. Yeah. Right. They keep it a secret. Yeah. So is that, do you feel safe at school now going to school, being a trans guy? Um, I don't know. Despite the, indoctrination and I truly feel like if I hadn't gone to the school this wouldn't have happened because like I said I really thought I was just going to get older and move out and take testosterone yeah I didn't even know how to go about that process until other people told me there are other trans students in the school and that eventually led me down to how they got just testosterone and that's why I took it initially. So even though I believe that it wouldn't have happened had I gone to a different school, mm -hmm. I still did have a good time with my friends and the teachers. I don't think they were bad people. I just mm -hmm. think that this is not something that kids and nonetheless students should be spreading around. Are you kidding? It's, no, I agree with you. I don't think that they're bad yeah. people. And I don't know what their intentions are, right? I'm, I'm going to assume yeah. their intentions were not bad. And I don't think a lot of this comes from a bad place. I just think people yeah. are complete, being completely misguided on what it even yeah. means to be trans. You didn't even get a diagnosis, did you? <laughs> um, I was diagnosed with dysphoria. Okay. But it was very... Gosh, I don't even really remember the process. I'm sure. So, so how did I you, just did you go to a therapist? Did they somebody send you to a therapist? Yeah. Or, oh, they did. Yeah. So who, was, who did? Well, that? I was initially in therapy for OCD. Okay. Great. And eventually, that therapist um, changed me to a different therapist who was for LGBT kids. Her entire room was just full of rainbow stuff and trans imagery. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's not indoctrination. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's crazy. But why would why would your OCD therapist, do, were you talking to her, that therapist about how you felt like a, a trans person? Is that why they sent you? Um, I did mention it. And as okay. soon as I mentioned it, that's when she transferred me to a different one. Gotcha. That therapist... Both therapists were horrible. <laughs> no offense, but no. the OCD one, I think she just got rid of me because she was tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> She's all, I'm done. You're trans. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is funny, but. Yeah, kind of. It's, it's also careless. <laughs> right on. Yeah, it's gross, yeah. actually. So she sent you to a to a <laughs> to a LGBTQIA pee pee poo poo therapist. <laughs> it's literally that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is literally covered in flags and <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you walk in the door and you're magically trans. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what she's gonna diagnose me with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, no, you're not trans. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you hit the therapist now, and the therapist diagnoses you with dysphoria. Uh, dysmorph gender. Oh, dysmorph dysphoria. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. After okay. how many meetings with her? Do you know? Do you remember? Or was it um, quite a while? Or I don't remember exactly, but okay. I do remember being there for a while talking about other things like my OCD and anxiety. And then one week I brought it up and that's when the whole process started. I just remember it happening so quickly within maybe a week, the most two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember I went into her office and she has straight up told me that she knew my dad wasn't going to sign the permission slip for testosterone. And so she said she was going to hit up her friend at Planned Parenthood so that when I was turned 18, I can walk in there and ask for him. Uh, 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 look at my mouth. <laughs> uh, wow. Just wow. It's tag teaming. You know what I mean? Like they're handing you up. They have a whole structure set up. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even, that didn't even. Yeah. They have a whole, like, you know, they have a thing with doctors where they refer each other. That's normal, right? Like my dentist mm -hmm. refers me to this dermatologist. They work together there. That's actually happens in the medical space, right? They sort of refer, but this is not the same thing. This feels yeah. like a tunnel. Like, okay, we're going to diagnose you, whatever that means, right? And then next thing you know, so she has an, a, an what did she call it? A friend or a person? A buddy. A buddy. <laughs> yeah. Planned Parenthood, which I despise, <laughs> by the way. So, okay. So, I'm sorry. Go on. Because the whole thing is like no, freaking okay. bad. <laughs> uh, the, the whole, all those years are so blurry, so it's hard to sure. say exactly. Sure. But I do remember moments and sure. when i was being diagnosed yeah uh that process was also very quick and she had asked me if she wanted to explain to my mom what it meant to have that mm -hmm. and she had a talk with her i don't remember that at all i want to ask my mom one day but yeah you should yeah you should. no I, I would like so to too. yeah me too but yeah Sometimes when I bring it up, she oh. also doesn't remember. So <laughs> I know it's probably hard on your mom and your parents. I can't imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. That I feel I think, really sad for parents. I think it was worse on my dad. Yeah, because you're his little girl. That's why. Seriously. Oh yeah. When I detransitioned, he was so happy. <laughs> totally. I completely understand. They they lose their daughter. You know, yeah. I know I went through it with my parents. They lost their daughter. Luckily, like yeah. I did, I am this person, right? And it worked out for yeah. me, which is, again, this is a very rare thing, Jade. It's so gross mm -hmm. the way that they're making it seem like everyone is trans. I'm like, what? This has never been like this. It's always been a very tiny, tiny minority of the world. It's not what people are trying to make it be. No. I mean, clearly, listen to your story. It's like yeah. you were just sort of pushed in this direction. Mm -hmm. So you were fast. It was fast diagnosis. Is what yeah, very, very quick. Mm -hmm. So I went in around my 18th birthday. I had, I don't think I was even 18 for a week at that point. Wow. Um, and I got my first testosterone shot. I walked in and the nurse, her buddy, <laughs> introduced me to the doctor very briefly and then the doctor left for lunch or something i don't know but basically the nurse was putting me on testosterone for the very first time not even a doctor wow it was her friend who was also a trans man i believe he was around i, I he didn't look older than 30 <laughs> honestly <laughs> Yeah. Like if I were estimating an age, he didn't look like he had been in the field for very long. Wow. Well, you know, he, was he a nurse or a nurse practitioner or something to that effect? I just yeah. remember he was a nurse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what did he do? Did he give you the testosterone? He showed me how to take the shot. Okay. Uh, but before that, he left me in the room mm -hmm. with about three papers 
People say I'm lying about this, but I, I swear. Oh, let me hold, <laughs> hold up right there for a minute. Hey, everybody. She's not lying. She showed up. She's telling her story. You don't know if she's lying or not. And how dare you ever even say that about her? So there, I took care of that. And <laughs> now please move on, Jade. <laughs> so... I know my memory is foggy, but I remember this. I remember being handed a, a stack of about three papers, and it was a pride imagery and a, like an introduction to Planned Parenthood. And the very last page was symptoms or side effects that testosterone would cause. And absolutely nothing on there had stated any of the health issues that I would end up experiencing later on. Wow. Nothing. I mean, it was pretty much just cosmetic, like facial hair, your body fat redistributing, uh -huh. things like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Disgusting. You know how long I did mm -hmm. this ago? I keep reminding everybody 31 years ago, right? <laughs> and why are they not advanced? enough to tell you all the things that are going to happen to you that I keep screaming about, right? Atrophy, all the insane stuff that is going to take you out and they have none of it in the consent form. Isn't that supposed to be a consent form, right? Like you're yeah. consenting to this. So the only way you can consent to something is by having the pros and cons of this particular, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're just giving you basic Oh, hair growth and your voice might change and right. Yeah. Your hair that might, you might lose your hair, whatever mm -hmm. other bullshit kind of stuff. What mm -hmm. does, how can you make an informed choice? You can't, <laughs> you can't. Especially after I had just turned 18, people wow. love to say I was an adult, but no, you were. I, <laughs> I was still living with my parents. I was still in high school because I had skipped a year of school. So I was, uh, wow. I still had one more year of high school to go. I wasn't, I You're wasn't a child. A, an adult. Yeah. Jade, you were a child. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. I'm telling you right now, an 18 year old is a child. You cannot make yeah. this kind of, I get tw to me, even a 21 year old is still on some level a child. Yeah. To make these kinds <laughs> of, these agree. are not, this is, we're not talking about you changing your wardrobe. We're talking about, <laughs> I don't understand why this is such a hard conversation to have. We're handing you stuff that is irreversible and they keep saying it's reversible. What? Like, and also they did not give you consent. They did not give you a, what, what do they call that? A, a, you know, a informed consent. They did not. They did not give you the right paperwork to make an informed uh, choice here. They're full if, of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it if makes you me sat mad. me down. Yeah. If, if you, you sat me down and told me, Jade, this is going to happen to you after you take testosterone, I would have said no. That's if you right. told me everything I was going to experience within the next few years, I would have said no. And I even had that attitude while I was in there because yeah. growing up, I my dream was to be a mother. Oh. And when I went in there, I, I I remember about a week before that, I was at lunch with my friends and I straight up said, I think word for word, if this is going to make me infertile, if I can't get pregnant later, I will not take testosterone. I don't care mm -hmm. how much I want it. Mm -hmm. I straight up said that in front of my group of like 10 friends. Wow. And... That was not on the list that I was given. There you go. And in fact, to show that that was a thought, the nurse came in after giving me a moment with the papers. And I just, I straight up asked him, will this cause me infertility? What is the deal with that? And he told me that I did not have to worry about that. That... In fact, I probably should go on birth control because it was not birth control and that I would still be fertile. That is testosterone. <laughs> and all I, I had to it. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
What? They lied to you. They straight up lied you to you. Straight up lied to me because that's not what happens. That's not what happens. It shuts down your whole reproduction. I got atrophy. Yeah. I, you know, I almost died, Jade. L- literally, yeah, I, I actually I almost heard. died from sepsis and and at, it Ugh. atrophied my uterus and my cervix together. Mind you, it I was about fifteen covered. years of, of of testosterone, but I was already having these pains three to four years into it, and nobody could tell me what it was. So they they have the information from me. I post it all over the internet. Yet, do they put it in these papers that they give you? No. You want to know why they don't do that, Jade? They don't want to scare you. They don't want to scare you not to take it. That's exactly why they don't put it in there. It is it is malpractice. That's malpractice. You can't. You have to give a, a patient all the information of the drugs that they're going to take, what they're going to do, especially a young person. It just makes me so mad for you. You know. I, I, I care about you, Jade, and I care about myself, and I care about this situation that has put me here, right? It's not fun. When I see trans joy, and I want to just, like, it makes me so <laughs> mad. This isn't joyful. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then they put a woman yeah. like you in a situation like that who's struggling with other stuff going on with you. Because it's always mm-hmm. people like you. You know that. It's never – yeah. You have to look at the type of young people that are coming into this trans space. It's a very mm-hmm. specific kind of young person, right? It's Seeking. always, yeah. Yeah. Somebody so, struggling with dysmorphia or some that's sort of right. trauma. That's right. It's all of it. We, mm-hmm. oh God, it makes, I just, you know, I'm your trampa, so I'm getting very mad. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very protective of you. I'm like, yeah. Uh, uh. So, okay. So now you're, so you decided to take the testosterone. Uh, yeah. When he told me that I felt like I could trust him, like he was right. Yeah. I remember yeah. calling my sister and saying that wasn't something I needed to worry about also. Um, I felt like my anxieties had been eased and to think that, oh, all I need to do is stop taking testosterone to get pregnant. That's great. And that's what, yeah, that's what I had continued to tell people. Of course. Cause that's what you were told. I mean, mm-hmm. it seems like you're talking to a nurse, right? You're talking yeah. to medical <laughs> professionals. You would think that they're going to be telling you everything that you need to know, right? Of course, mm-hmm. everyone trusts the doctor. That's what, that's the thing <laughs> yeah. that's, I keep trying to raise the alarm. Doctors aren't God and doctors are, oh, no. remember they practice medicine. People forget that it's called practicing mm-hmm. medicine and medicine is always doing these things. But yeah. I, 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 I don't trust every doctor. It's like, look, if you got diagnosed with cancer, most people are going to get a second and third opinion. You know that. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. how come when kids, young people like yourself are diagnosed with transism or whatever you want to call it, gender, <laughs> how come you don't have to get a second or third opinion? That's what, mm-hmm. you know, it, the, it's not like they're just telling you to go home and change your clothes. They're telling you to take testosterone. So if that's they don't I get so affirm. mad about it. Yeah. That's right. If they don't affirm, they'll get fired. Unbelievable. They're considered a bigot. They I can't. Mean, deny what a that, child wants which is crazy it is so crazy i don't know how we got here but you're gonna help us get out of it so now you are on testosterone at the age of 18 yeah Holy still in shit. high school i was i graduated when i was 19 so okay so all through through 18 to 19 you're in high school on testosterone yeah. you're a mm-hmm. trans dude Are there other trans dudes at your high school? Yes, there were many. There were many Many. trans students, yeah. (laughs) Most of them were female, but there was a lot. Wow, just wow. That's in California? Mm -hmm. High school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. (laughs) The school is... California. (laughs) The school doesn't exist anymore. They... Uh, mm. It was a charter school, so they okay. disbanded Good. the year that I graduated. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm glad <laughs> they, they got rid of it. Oh, my God. It's so gross. <laughs> All right. So, now, so, so you get out of high school, right? So you, you, gra- you graduate high school? Yeah, they did. And then what? What happens now after you graduate high school? So I was on testosterone, and I 
became a zombie, I felt like I was numb to my emotions and my thoughts. It was really weird. I felt okay. lethargic 24-7. It had yeah. killed my sex drive. Yeah. A lot of people on testosterone, they report the exact opposite happening to them. I don't know why this had an eff that effect on me. Um, but after that, we moved here. Okay. So I'm still in California, just in a, okay. a different place, not my hometown. Okay. Uh -huh. And I don't know. It was just it was you weren't a dark feeling good in my life. Yeah, yeah, you weren't feeling good. It doesn't. It does affect people like that. It affected me like that in the beginning, right? Yeah. And also, I still get those effects of it if I'm not constant with my injections, right? Because we're, we're, we do have, as females, we do have a small amount of testosterone in our body. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a foreign substance, but it's foreign enough because we're putting a, a, a big chunk into our body at that time. And your mm -hmm. body's going nuts. That's the thing yeah. is, it's not, it's not normal for girls to put testosterone in their body. It yeah. actually does wreak <laughs> havoc. Not no. And it can, it can also does something to your brain and, you know, uh, so you were feeling lethargic. You were feeling kind of a dark space. You weren't necessarily yeah, feeling I've... what everyone else is saying. Trans joy. You weren't feeling that. <laughs> that was the exact opposite. It was very strange. <laughs> You're I... like, wait, where's the trans joy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not at wow. all. I wow. I felt like even within the first week, I, I was still shy at the high school, but I was still more... I would say I was a little more outgoing at that point. I okay. would make jokes. I would okay. play around with my friends and the teachers. And it was like suddenly I had become silent. Yeah. It was very weird because there was always this funny banter between me and the teachers or like my yeah. friend group. Yeah. And then when I became silent, it was like everything else became silent and everybody noticed it. And yeah. even my best friend noticed it and yeah. I didn't feel good and it was weird sure no you're you're going to some kind of depression it sounds like right which hormones can yeah. do that if your hormones are whacked out if you just take menopause right when women go through menopause they go through yeah. depression like just no sex drive like there's many kind of like, yeah, similarities it's... yeah it's like injecting a teenager with menopause, pretty much. Pretty much. So I, I kind of think you were going through a uh, induced menopause at at nineteen, yeah. mm. right? Yeah. So the how long does, it, does this last? And you're on testosterone, and then how long does it last until you realize maybe I shouldn't be taking this? Um, I was in. I think 2020, around that time, I was already not feeling good about my decision. I started thinking long term about my life and how I wanted it to look. I really thought about how does it look like when I'm when I get married? How does it look like when I have a long term boyfriend? Things like that. And not none of those scenarios i saw myself as this trans man that's not how i saw myself i knew that i was using it as a coping mechanism i was using testosterone to distort this what i saw as a monster like what kids had told me i was or how dysmorphia made me look in my mind I wanted to be somebody else and I thought testosterone was going to make me somebody else almost like this character this male character but yeah when I would look in the mirror it was still me just different and about I had got I had gotten assaulted in 2020 oh. and after that that's when I really just I, I didn't know I was in a dark place. And after that, I had met my ex, mm -hmm. not my boyfriend anymore. Mm -hmm. And <sighs> mm -hmm. 
that's when I decided to stop taking testosterone. Mm-hmm. People like to make fun of me and say that he converted me or forced me to uh, not be trans anymore, <sighs> which is ridiculous, but that was not the case. No. At that point, I was already in a horrible place. I was already questioning where I wanted to go with my life. And on top of that, I had just been assaulted. And here was this yeah. guy who was showing me that I, well, at the time, could be loved. And I didn't have to distort myself for that. Aww. So I that felt... He sounds sweet. He sounds like a nice oh, guy. Uh, <laughs> that not? did not end well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but you know, relationships yeah. are weird. So that's yeah. That's all. I <laughs> but I mean, so he was kind of talking you to. Was he talking you out of it or? Oh no, he he didn't care okay. Uh, about okay what I did. He just said yeah. he would like me no matter what. Okay, okay. Hmm. So, so you I with, you got together with him. Like yeah. he was your boyfriend for a while? Yeah, he was my first pre- real boyfriend. But, but you were still presenting as a trans man at the time? For, uh, no, not that long. Okay. So I started detransitioning okay. late January, early February of 2021. And I met him in January. Okay. Uh, at first, I wasn't. I knew I wanted to detransition, but I didn't think detransitioners existed. Right. <laughs> I really, I, this yeah. sounds ridiculous, but yeah, it doesn't. I thought I was going to be the first one until I yeah. looked it up and there were a few, mm-hmm. there wasn't many. This was only 2021 and I mm-hmm. only found about a handful. This yeah. was not as common as it is now. Right. Um, right. And I watched one of Elle Palmer's videos, I forgot exactly which one it was, but watching her video, I related to it so much and I immediately called my sister Uh and I I sent her the video Mm. and I told her that's exactly what I felt. And slowly I started to detransition from there. Did you have a support group? Was your sister supportive? Yeah. My family was supportive. Great. There was no... Great. Great. Yeah, my friends were not. <laughs> no, that was my next question. I already kind of... <laughs> because they were trans. And and, and mm-hmm. they probably felt like you were a... Um, you, you, what do they call you? All kinds of names they a call traitor. you. But, <laughs> traitor. Traitor. Yeah. They thought you were a traitor. Yeah. yeah. And they thought you were never trans, really. And many of them aren't no. either, but they won't admit it. Right? Mm-hmm. So, of course, they're mad at you because you're leaving the club. And and, yeah. if, and it, they think it reflects on them. That's why they don't understand mm-hmm. these are personal journeys. We're not all the same, right? It's a personal journey of you. you. Yeah. And instead of supporting you and saying, "Wow," because what? Look, my friend, I'm transsexual too. <laughs> yet I support you, and I support yeah. all detransitioners. It doesn't have any effect on me. In fact, it breaks my heart because yeah. it did work out for me, and I am supposed to be. But you were never I supposed think- to be. If you're truly secure with being transsexual, then it wouldn't bother you. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> my point, young lady. Because it it would <laughs> it benefits you too. That's uh, right. Because you you th- there help would be us. More, yeah. yeah. You actually There'd be more help research us. for. In, but we're just putting everybody in danger. Because of we're fucking what? look, I'm going to say it right now. We are <laughs> fucking with young people. How dare we do this to people like Jade and all of the now, now do you see how many detransitioners there are, Jade? Do you see? Yeah, there's a there's so many. It's crazy. About... It's... <laughs> Only a year ago, I clicked the detrans tag on TikTok. I did not see more than four. Now wow. I go on the tag and there is so many. There's so many accounts, it's and that so was sad. only a year ago. Oh, my God. It's only going to get worse. Sorry, but it I'm going to be honest. It's only going to get worse, and it's going to get more insane. So there's so, – there's. oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry, it's, Richard. Go, you go on. It's so I bad. was going to say, if you see – I've seen average Instagram accounts of girls 
Mm. Only to find out that they desisted. Okay. <laughs> like, they're right. So desisting. I have this. What's the difference between desisting and detransitioning? It means desisting means you didn't even start the transition. No, desisting means that you only socially transition. So, so you didn't take any medical steps right. to transition. Okay, right. Right. Yeah. I honestly believe that um, close to a majority of women in the future are going to be either desisted or detrans. Me too. I 100% agree with you on that. You People watch. say I'm crazy, but... Nope. You're not. I really I'm, think there's going to be a whole generation of women. Like I'm an old tranny. I know a lot. <laughs> I know a lot about this whole thing. You watch. There, I mean, I'll bet you, I'll bet all you a hundred bucks out there. There's no way they're all going to, because they're not. Yeah. They're actually yeah. like you, Jade, but they're scared. They're scared to detransition or desist because yeah. look what happened to you and continues yeah. to happen to you. I watch people bully you on the, on the internet. It's sick. It's sick. Yeah. And I'm talking to all you bullies out there who come after her you're sick and you, and there's no you have no you're not secure in yourself it's why they're attacking you i won't tolerate that jade at all i will not tolerate that that is not okay that is not community that has nothing to do with being trans it's nasty and mean yeah. you're hurting you're hurting yeah. this should have never happened to you ever mm -hmm. it shouldn't and so so you were how many years three or four years on testosterone yeah, about three. Yeah. Okay. So now you decide to stop testosterone, right? When you mm. are detransitioning. Did you just stop cold turkey or did you talk to a doctor? Yeah, I did. Cool. I stopped. Because at that point, I. Yeah. I thought that it was a bad thing, detransitioning. Yeah. I didn't know it existed. No. So. <laughs> Of course, I totally understand that. But here's the problem I have with that. They're 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 really cool with giving you the testosterone, right? Yeah. There's no problem. You can get it in 20 minutes. It's literally not a mm -hmm. problem. But what happens when you decide like you did to remove yourself from that? No help, right? Did you find help from anybody to help you detransition? De My family. Um... No, I'm talking about medical. I'm talking oh, about no. doctors. They continue to prescribe me testosterone for uh, what? I think two years after that, I don't get text messages anymore, but what? they continue to prescribe it. Yeah. I actually, I, <laughs> I, I actually went to a different psychiatrist before this. It was while I was trans. Um, yeah. yeah. And I hadn't checked up with Planned Parenthood in months and months. And mm -hmm. the psychiatrist was angry because they were still prescribing me testosterone when I hadn't even had an appointment. Wow. In months. Okay. And he, he straight up told me, I don't know how you're getting this prescription still. Are you lying? I said, no, I'm not lying. I can bring in my prescriptions that I've been picking up. Wow. And he tried to talk to them, but I still ended up getting prescribed it even about two years after detransitioning. Unbelievable. Just, I, I can't, the whole world's going to freak out. <laughs> I mean, you're all here. Everyone, the whole world is hearing this and they need to hear it. So again, thank you so much. You're, you're awesome for standing up and speaking out. No, it, it takes a lot of guts. Not everybody will do this because you get bullied and the people hate you and the trans community calls you names and just like I do, right? But I, like I keep telling you, I'm an old tranny. You can call me whatever you want. I will never back down, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I got these kids' backs. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I feel – I don't feel responsible – for that, I feel responsible to be an honest trans person and, and mm -hmm. say this should never be happening to somebody, uh, especially your age, and without mm -hmm. any kind of structure. Do you know there was literally no structure for you? It was yeah. online, school, trans friends, you're trans, Planned Parenthood, testosterone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean you did go to some therapy there, but that even seems like they just pushed you. No, that was – horrible that was not therapy that was not it was affirmation therapy yeah right mm -hmm. affirm 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 the whole thing is is completely insane i hear your puppy you can pick him up you want to get him he's <laughs> no got, he's, he's like he's, he's like let me, in. <laughs> he's like let me up uh, what are you doing so he's right there <laughs>
Do Do you feel like you have any side effects happening to you right now? From- oh yeah. It, oh, that's what. I'm right thinking. now, there are still side effects going on, but Tell me I about that. definitely did have so many health issues coming off of testosterone. Can you tell us? So, what yeah. Like? <laughs> so I had started trying to conceive with my ex, mm-hmm. and I had developed ovarian cysts. So they were on and off. Um, mm-hmm. I was constantly in the ER. They would burst. Wow. Wow. It did was, they tell you it was from the testosterone or they don't know? They just don't know. They don't know. I told, I, they don't know, but. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. There's. 100%. I, My family does not have infertility issues. I'm Mexican. <laughs> I, I, I lived in, uh, right on, friend. I'm an honorary Mexican because I lived in Mexico for 10 years. So I'm an honorary Mexican. No, 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 no. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> they, we're, they, they make babies. <laughs> we're oriented. extremely fertile. Yeah. Because you're family there oriented. Was, yeah. There was absolutely no reason for me to develop cysts. There was no reason. And yeah. it's the fact that it started after I stopped testosterone too. I can tell you it is because there, look what happened to me and my reproductive. It literally attacks the reproductive system, the testosterone. Mm-hmm. It Because you need estrogen for our parts to work down there. It's actually estrogen that makes everything work nice. Once you start mm-hmm. putting testosterone in your body, all the estrogen comes out of there and that messes up the whole system. A hundred percent. I will. I will say that i believe that that happened because of that it's because you I didn't have too. the problem yeah totally yeah totally so now so okay so you have ovarian cysts and mm-hmm. what other problems um so i was trying to conceive and that was not happening i would get checkups to see if there were any fertility issues and there wasn't Mm-hmm. I was, but I was constantly having infections, like yeast infections, yeah. yeah, bacterial vaginosis. I don't anymore, but yeah, it was relentless. That, along with my cyst, I sometimes could not even stand up straight at work. Oh my god! Um, and there was also a pain between my ribs that it was so agonizing, and nobody oh believed me. The extent of the pain, it was the worst pain I have ever felt physically. Uh, I went to the ER and they told me, oh, your, your cyst had burst, something like that. Yeah. But I told them there's still a pain here. Uh-huh. And they didn't check that until one day I had gotten home from work. No, it was uh, after an interview I had for a job. I got home and I ate and there was an agonizing pain again. Mm. And it was, I thought it was going to pass, but I almost fainted and I threw up Mm. because the pain was so intense. At the moment, the moment that I threw up, I knew that I had to go to the ER because I had never thrown up from pain. Mm. So I went to the ER and they were about to just send me home uh, and explain it as a cyst. But there was a doctor that knew that something was wrong with me because he was saying there's no reason she should be screaming like that. I was screaming. Uh, people were looking at me. I was not being over traumatic. I, I think it was embarrassing screaming sure. because yeah. of pain. I wouldn't do that on purpose. Of course. Not. Um, yeah. So he found out that my gallbladder was covered in gallstones. They couldn't save it. It wasn't an option. Well, and the gallbladder, the gallbladder, yeah. right? I don't yeah. think it's a necessary thing. I think a lot of people get their gallbladders taken out. But the fact that it was covered in what, sis? Gallstones. What? That is crazy. Mm. And the pain started after i had stopped testosterone i never had that pain before and after 
I had so many complications with that, but after the surgery, they were trying to figure out why I had gotten so many gallstones because it was so many. Wow. They were asking me if I was an alcoholic, if there's a family history. There wasn't. There's My family's yeah. very healthy, like I said. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I told them about the testosterone and the surgeon immediately said it was that. Oh. Because he explained that the gallbladder uh, is has a lot to do with hormones. Right. That's, that's, uh, what? Yeah. And I bet the trans community is like, you're lying. That didn't really Yeah, happen. the gallbladder yeah. doesn't do that. What if I'm the doesn't first? <laughs> yeah, right. Totally. You're making that stuff up. That didn't really happen. I can actually see them saying that nonsense. It's just unbelievable. If you wow. look it up, there are a lot of... I we don't need to look it up. This literally <laughs> happened to you. And it actually is what the yeah. doctor said to you. Nobody needs yeah, to look he, it up. Yeah, he did not hesitate. He just immediately yeah. said it was that. Yeah. So you had to have surgery and have it removed, right? Yeah, that was horrible. I had so many complications. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Uh, they said that I'm a slow healer so mm -hmm. compared to other people. So I experience physical mm -hmm. pain more and I heal slowly. So that was... yeah excruciating and along with that i was sitting there and wondering how badly i had failed oh. um i felt so horrible because here i was thinking that i was going to get pregnant or be a mother and yeah like a normal how old was i 22 year old 21 year old and instead i was hospitalized having surgery having cysts failing trying to conceive i i was not this healthy 21 year old i wasn't like my family members my age right and it it's not to feel sorry for myself it that's just how i felt i felt powerless and on top of that, my one of my family members was giving birth on the floor above me, mm -hmm. and I, I love her baby girl so much, but that felt horrible. I was wondering, why is that not me, and what, why is this me right now? All because of some stupid drug. I know. I can't imagine. But don't beat yourself up, friend. You didn't do it. The adults in the room did it, just so you know. Yeah. The adults are responsible for this. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm disgusted the way they treated you as a transsexual yeah. and somebody who should have never – You 100% is not your fault. I just need to tell you yeah. that. It is literally the adults who put you in this position. And I'm not even going to say the community. I'm not even going to say your peers because they're also indoctrinated mm -hmm. into this thought process. But shame yeah. on all of these medical, shame on Planned Parenthood, shame on the trans guy who showed you how to shame them all. They all know, <laughs> trust me, Jade, they all know what they're doing. They can't mm -hmm. not. You know what I mean? They can't not not yeah. know what they're doing. I mean, unless they're literally out of their minds, they can't not <laughs> know what they're doing. It's It's yeah. not possible as a trans person – to not know that this is not the right thing to do. That that's mm -hmm. why I'm so shocked at the trans community. Don't don't think they don't know. But why? Why would they do this to you? Why? I think uh Big Pharma just saw an opportunity yeah. and Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. It, but I'm just shocked at actual doctors and nurses and you know and, and people being so like okay with just giving you testosterone in 20 minutes i it mm -hmm. just doesn't make you know how hard it was for me to get testosterone 30 <laughs> years ago thank god i'm not kidding it feels horrible when it's hard to get to a space but but i it, the whole reason was so that i was solid right and i didn't mm -hmm. ever think about going backwards yeah it was way too quick way to it's like it's a joke it's an actual mm -hmm. joke at your expense at the expense of these young people's health right mm -hmm. so are you going to be able to conceive do you know uh yeah apparently everything is fine still awesome i don't i honestly i believe that it just wasn't 
meant to happen because of the way that relationship ended. Sure. He ended up way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ended up double life cheating. And oh, God. I would Yeah, that was I wouldn't have looking back, I'm okay with where I am now. I don't need a child now, but I remember how horrible it felt and how close I was to actually achieving the dreams I had always had. And then it was felt like it was being ripped out of my hands. And to top it all off, I was cheated on. And it felt like I had to restart my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, being cheated on is horrible. It's happened to me. It's It feels so ugly and dirty. And it feels just feels like, you know, you have that trust bond with your partner. And when Mm -hmm. they do that, I don't even know how to explain it. If you haven't ever had someone cheat on you, I don't, I I can, I I really can Mm -hmm. sympathize with you because it's happened to me and it just totally throws you for a loop. You know, it's it's not nice. It changes you into a different person. A hundred percent. (laughs) Trust what I had a hardest time trusting people after that in a relationship. It was so, I acted out because of it. Right. You, you, yeah. you do things that aren't necessarily great because you're scared. You don't ever want it to happen mm-hmm. again. What's happening with you today? How 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 is your health? What where what are you f- focusing on? Um, I still have side effects. My voice, my throat always hurts. Wow. Um, that wow. definitely wow. takes a toll. Well, right now I'm sick, so I sound weird, but no, but your voice sounds actually feminine to me. It doesn't even, Thank no, you. I'm not kidding. I have the tranny voice, but you don't have any, you don't have that. You don't have that, that, that crazy Mickey Mouse shit. You don't have that. Your voice no. sounds feminine. It actually does. I, I want you, you to know that. I don't see that. So what other, what besides that? My voice was very high pitched before testosterone. So. Oh, well, I just brought it down to this sort of mid range. It does yeah, not so sound it, male. It does not sound male. I just want you to know that at all. Sometimes I swear it's, I still sound like a dude, but. <laughs> you don't. But also I'm looking at, but I, but if I even don't look at you and I hear you, it doesn't, I'm, I'm, I'm being very honest with you. It doesn't. So I can imagine though, I'm sure you have a lot of, um, mm. I don't want to use the word baggage, but I can't think of another word right now. But I, I'm sure you have a lot of that stuff from it. It was traumatic. Yeah. It's like so traumatic what happened to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And- it still it hurts. Physically, it hurts. Talking a lot gets exhausting. I yeah. lost my singing voice. Mm. And the health issues that I still have. I mean, TMI, but I still have urinary incontinence so that is you have incontinence at 23 yeah fuck off people doing this to a person (sighs) how do you get that back how do you stop that from happening are there exercises i think you can do to make that kind of uh it's not it's not horrible it's not severe but okay it's just draining it's uncomfortable yeah. that's what's that's what older people get by the way that's yeah. part of menopause because that's what happened it put you in early menopause and all these mm-hmm. menopausal things happen to your 22 year old body shame on them shame on them and so what other you mind me asking what other do you have aches and pains or like stuff like that um i did have breast atrophy i thought that was going to be permanent uh i was very insecure about that detransitioning but for some reason my breasts actually went back to normal and became wow. fuller i don't know why <laughs> i think that was just all gone age. but no it's age because you know the mm-hmm. elasticity of the skin as you get older it becomes but i think because you're young it everything bounced back god you're so lucky mm-hmm. really yeah and you didn't have surgery you only used testosterone yeah, only testosterone. Oh, this God. only surgery was the gallbladder, but yeah, there are no, complications like, with that too. Oh, right. I, I'm sure you're going to have everlasting on some level something. But what I mean is like you didn't have top surgery and bottom surgery oh, no. and a hysterectomy and like every and then no. every, oh god. I was I was very close to getting top surgery though. Sure you were. I know. 
<laughs> I'm so grateful that that never happened. I think if I had waited even a year later, yeah. <sighs> I am yeah. so grateful for that, even though I feel like I don't have any breasts. <laughs> it's still it's okay. something. <laughs> you know, it's been how long now have you been off the testosterone? A couple of years or a year? Since 2021. So, okay, so three years, like three about years. the same time that I've been off, that I was on. Did you grow any facial hair when you? When yeah, I, I did. It wasn't yeah. too much, but I think okay. it was because of my genes, my. Yeah. That's right. Uh, dad doesn't really have a lot of no. Then you're not too much facial hair. Yeah. It is uncomfortable. I have been lasering it off. I do have to shave every day as American <laughs> as that is. <laughs> That's all right. You know, there's actual women who have to shave. You know, yeah, the PCOS it's, and all of that. Yeah, it's it's and yeah, and the other complications I think are well, they are from surgery. I have IBS, lactose intolerance, and oh I'm forgetting the name. I don't know how to say it, but it's this okay. It's this syndrome that you get from removing your gallbladder that... Oh, right. I think I know I, what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I can't hold down food. I get pain from eating. That's exhausting. Is that going to go away? Really Do the doctors say it's going to go away, or they don't know? Um. It can be either or. It can be lifelong or it can go away. It's... I, <laughs> Who knows? I mean, you have a good attitude. I'm going to say, like, I can't believe your attitude. I would be so different. <laughs> I would just be like a ball of anger. Like, I'm going to sue everyone. <laughs> you're, you're all going down. <laughs> but you just, you like, you, you have such an awesome attitude. And, you know, I mean, you might be mad. Are you? Do you feel mad about it? Yeah, sometimes it's really hard. And yeah, I really wish I could have just been who I was originally supposed to be. Sometimes I do wonder what would I have looked like because testosterone also changes your face or my That's voice true. or my body. They told me that my fat redistribution, that it would revert, but it never did. There is a little bit. You can see there is a difference, mm -hmm. but I think that's mostly because of weight loss. I don't, I don't have the same body that I used to have. Mm -hmm. I just wish that I could have lived that life. It, sometimes it feels as if I'm not living in a reality I'm supposed to be living in. I, I mean, are you, are you going to therapy by any chance? Um, I was. Mm -hmm. I did find a new therapist, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't know. I felt like I needed to take a break from that because therapists sometimes can be pushy. Totally. And totally. they don't. They sometimes they expect you to be a certain way by a certain time. That's right. I was told, oh, it's already been this long and you're still this way. And I <laughs> did <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. That is so, that is unprofessional. <laughs> I mean, she, she was, yeah, she was really cool, but no. I, I need more that, patience. That that's right. That's not a therapist's job to say that. The therapist's job is to yeah. listen, sit and listen, and give you some feedback and help you work through yeah. your issues. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm a big on therapy. By the way, I've been I've literally been doing 30 years of ther therapy. I'm never going to leave therapy. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's the only reason I'm pretty solid. Needs Everybody yeah. needs it. It's not a bad thing, right? And mm -hmm. and 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 also, it's not a bad thing to admit that. Trans is a mental disorder, by the way. Yeah. And it is. It's 100% a mental disorder. This isn't normal. You think this is, well, <laughs> this is not normal. And I don't care. I have no, I don't need to be normal, right? But mm. stop acting like this is normal. It's not. This is actually weird. It's, it's weird for a woman to want to be a man and a man to want to be a woman. It's just, it's off. There's nothing that's wrong life. with that. That's life that's in general. That's right. You don't have to be normal. You don't have to that's make right. people accept you. <laughs> but when you're young, that pressure is there. 
And that's why the young kids are being like you. They're just being yeah, sh exactly. shoved into this because you do need to have friends and you need to be liked and you need to be popular, right? And you need to be all of yeah. those things that that young people. Now trans is that new kind of space, that, right? Yeah, for sure. When What kid doesn't want to be accepted and that's feel right. good about themselves when yeah. that time in your life feels... Yep. horrible and there's so much pressure and you're discovering that there are certain expectations yep. for women and girls that's it's right. scary that's right yep it is it's very scary nobody should be able to tra do you think young people should be able to transition no i don't think Me so Me i would not i would allow my kids to Play what they wanted with at home, but I would not socially or medically transition yeah. my kids right. if I had any. Well, now we see the damage, right? My, my parents on some level social transitioned me in the 60s, but it, I was just Buck, the little girl that was a little, you know what I mean? I was that tomboy. It wasn't even an issue. What <laughs> trans wasn't a thing. My parents were like, he'll grow out of it. Let you do that yeah. kind of stuff, right? Like, which is it's a sad. normal way to handle it. Yeah. It is sad. Yeah. It's very I know sad. two little tom girls and my tomboys in my family. Uh God. And they're Watch. they're just that. They're just that. Keep watching them. <laughs> what no, I'm not kidding. Get, no, no, these... don't let anybody get around them. <laughs> no, definitely not. Not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm like just get me like this with them. <laughs> no, I'm scared for the kids. I, I have me my too. eyes on my kiddo here and his friends. And if I listen to what they're talking about and if I hear any of that language, you know what I mean? I'm gonna come in and mm -hmm. like break up the party. Because we're Gosh. not having we're not talking about trans and we're not talking about non-binary. We're not talking about neo pronouns and we're not going on TikTok, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that dad. You're not going on TikTok, dude. <laughs> Do you know uh, Gina Hotch? I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm the name. To... Who is that? It was, um, it was the GC that was trying to dox me and other detransitioners oh like excellent and presha you're kidding yeah, yeah i saw oh, you yeah. writing about that and i was like who is this crazy nutcase just block her <laughs> i well we did block her but um she was going off about how she would never allow her kids to do that and and be a transitioner or detransition but you can think you're invincible all you want as a parent, but the truth is that you're not. My parents were good parents and they That's still right. are. That's right. You, your kids are going to go through hard things in life and you can't protect Cannot, them from that. That's right. You, you Thank never you. know. I can raise nope. a child that can end up being a detransitioner too. That's right. So could I. <laughs> So could I, because now the kids are going to do whatever they want. Like you can literally, you transition without your parents on some level knowing. And uh, all the kids I talk to, their parents don't know that you can hide in California. They don't even need to tell the parents. I'm like, oh no, not on my watch. How dare you teach my child how to lie? That's lying. That's teaching your kid to lie to the parents. I don't, yeah. I don't care how else you put it, but, and I have a really great following of people who is going to leave you a lot of love. They're not, they're not haters. They, mm -hmm. they really see what we're doing here. And um, yeah. that's why I value your time and I value you as a human. And I'm always here for you. I just need you to know you that. Too. Don't, don't <laughs> ever think that I'm ever, you need me. I'm here for you. And I will <laughs> kick the crap out of somebody <laughs> who tries to even <laughs> say that to you. Like, don't even try that. I'm <laughs> I'll come in, boom, boom. What did you say? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't play that stuff. I hate it. It's nasty. You're hurting, and you're you're trying to get your life back together. The last thing you need is some weirdo um, saying something <laughs> to you. So, is there anything you'd like to say before we leave? Like maybe to people out there. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, maybe to young people or anything like that. Mm, I don't know. Um... I mean, I always say that every child is going to be insecure mm -hmm. or feel like puberty is uncomfortable. That's just a part of life. Yeah. But for the parents, um, 
I think escaping that is sort of like dealing with an abuse victim. Mm -hmm. You can't push them or force them into detransition, even if you know that that is not your child and you truly feel that in your heart. You have to let them get through it. There are ways to encourage them to step away from that community and the grooming, but ultimately just don't push them too hard because you can be pushing them further in by doing that. The more that family tried to push me, the more that I stayed on testosterone and that caused me a lot of health issues. So if you have a child that you know they're doing it just as a fad and a trend. Mm -hmm. Please just be patient mm -hmm. and be there for them. Build a relationship with them so that they trust you and just pray. Just beautiful. Pray because God knows who your child truly is. And I believe that He will save your child like He saved me because God knew in my heart that I wanted to be a mother and a wife and That's right. he knew. Yes. So yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you for saying that because we need to hear that from young people so that we understand I'm trying to save these families. They're trying to break up the family. I'm trying to save the family. That is sick. You should never tell a child to leave their family unless they're literally being smashed. And you know what I mean? I'm serious. Yeah. But none of this is just because you're trans doesn't mean your parents hate you. They just need to get, understand the worst oh, no. that I see what they're doing. They're, that's how they right? what you said, groom these kids mm -hmm. is they get them away from the family. So by you saying no, that, it will help so many families. And to the kids, it feels like your parents hate you and they're bigoted as your online friends tell you, but it's not that. <laughs> your parent watched you grow up, has watched you grown up. Yeah. Your parent knows who they saw. Yeah. They know your soul and they see something that you don't. That's right. That's right. Thank you. It's so important that people understand, especially the young people, they're being told your parents don't understand you. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they, they actually do. birthed they, you. They understand <laughs> you more than anybody. Then you understand yourself. <laughs> yeah, actually, exactly. No, no, of course, I remember my parents used to say shit like that. I'm like, ah, whatever. You don't know anything. Now I'm like a parent and I'm like, oh, they actually knew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll see as you get older. They That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have such, yeah. you know, I'm so 60 right it's, like, and it's so crazy to be talking to all you 20 year olds and I, I just remember being 20 so I get it I totally get it all right but it's like I just want to knock you come on man wake up dude I'm gonna save you so much I, I'm telling you I did that don't do it but you can't you just can't they gotta do it they gotta go yeah. the thing I don't want them to do is what you what's happening with you young people I don't want you to get on testosterone I don't want you to cut your breasts off until you're yeah. solid and understand what that actual long-term situation means right when they start telling you that it's reversible that's why the kids are doing it because they think mm -hmm. it's reversible right it's not <laughs> it's not look at jade has so many health problems that who knows when she's going to be over those health problems the one thing that i want to say though is it's so awesome that you are going to be able to conceive still that Thank makes you. me very yeah um, i'm very grateful for that i was yes. terrified about I that know. i know I know. Yeah. I never thought about saving my eggs. So luckily I got to adopt a kid and I'm going to adopt a baby now. I'm going to actually adopt a little teeny baby. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm so happy. And you know, I'm a 61. Everyone's like, dude, aren't you too old to get a baby? I'm like, you know, no. no. <laughs> Do you see me? Do I act 60? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to be the, I'm the stay at home dad. I'm going to be pushing the stroller with the little baby. <laughs> I'm like so excited. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jade. You're such a lovely human being. I'm totally your friend. Me too. Um, we're, we're totally here together. Please leave her lots of beautiful comments. It's so important. She's stepped up and it's not easy to tell these stories and people are mean. And, you know, I, I do these to help us all get through this situation. And it means the world to me that Jade would be so giving to tell a story that's so profoundly horrifying as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> On Yeah, it just should have never happened. But it did. It did happen. And you have this story that I think 
you are going to do something powerful with it. You are. And that's what you need to know. Sometimes God gives us these paths that seem so crazy. And then when you get, you're like, oh, I know now why that had to happen to <laughs> yeah. me. And then you realize everything happens because it's supposed to be this way. So, yeah. so with that, friends, I'll see you guys on Wednesday on the live. And thanks for liking, subscribing, share this, leave comments, do all those beautiful things. And I'll see you guys all on the next one. <laughs>